Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Shella here bringing you Soul Sampler number 74, Insights for this week, which is December 18th to the 25th. Right in the middle of this week is our solstice time, which in the Northern Hemisphere, where I live, we are experiencing the winter solstice, the longest night of the year, happening the night of the 21st to the 22nd of December. And in the Southern Hemisphere, you'll be experiencing the summer solstice on that same night. The solstice times traditionally have been known as a time where there is a great exchange of power on the planet. So you can almost see it like summer and winter vying for power at this critical turning point. This is the reason why a lot of our ancient ancestors used to really celebrate and acknowledge this very significant turning point where in the northern hemisphere the days start getting longer and in the southern hemisphere at this time of year they're going to be getting shorter. So we can also see this power differential and exchange almost like a uh, contrast in power dynamics on the planet happening this week. We are feeling perhaps a little bit at the end of our tether, a little bit exhausted. And that is another common feature for this time of year. People often think it's just because Christmas is around the corner. For those of us, you know, from Western background, this is the time of year where we celebrate Christmas. And it tends to be quite stressful, a lot of activity, a lot of money getting spent, a lot of energy going out. This year in particular, it feels like so many people that I'm uh, communicating with are saying they just don't have it in them to do a great big Christmas event. Everyone is feeling like they want to stay a little closer to home, or at least they want to keep things really low key, not spend a ton of money, not have these, uh, you know, great stressful family gatherings, perhaps smaller, more intimate connections. And interestingly, I'm seeing a lot of connections with people who are perhaps neighbors. So neighbors and friends connecting even more than family traditionally. This does not mean that we are not gonna go back to having giant family Christmas celebrations or uh, you know seasonal celebrations to celebrate the return of the sun and so on. But what it feels like is that we're going through a bit of a period of clearing some of the old unnecessary habitual sort of patterns that go along with the way we've been celebrating this time of year and perhaps getting back into the deeper soulful connection around what it means to honor the things that we focus on at this time of year. And one of those things is a very sort of personal realignment with our spiritual traditions, our spiritual philosophies, and to say in effect that we are having a direct connection with source, with spirit, with God. However we pray, this week feels like a beautiful time to communicate with spirit in that way. And part of that is actually shutting off a lot of the intake. So this could be a great week for journaling, for going into meditation, for going into a kind of quiet, prayerful space and having your communication with whatever divine source creator is for you. Coming out of taking in a lot of media, a lot of information, a lot of energy coming from the internet. I see us kind of closing that off, even if it's just for a few short days over this very powerful time of year. I don't want to sound, uh, you know, really conspiracy or concerned. I do get a feeling that it's important. We're going to, of course, have some beautiful sharing with friends and loved ones. And I get a little bit of a feeling that it might be a good idea to shut your phone off, 
put it in another room. Um, you know, whatever you believe about the powers that be, one thing we know for sure is that these phones of ours, these smartphones are listening to our conversations because, you know, you talk about something, next thing you know, you've got an ad on your phone about the thing you were just talking about. So why don't we just say, yeah, later, we don't really need to have that extra AI listening ear in on our, you know, special sharing and communication with our friends and loved ones over this next few days, perhaps even over the next two or three weeks as we are getting together and honoring the celebration of the holiday season. I do feel like some people are going to be traveling, of course, and what I get is that there's a really nice energy, there's a really nice synergy. I see a lot of healing happening from connecting uh, going back and forth between two locations. I do see people driving more than flying. So, you know, locations that are within driving distance, I, I get a feeling of a lot of protection, a lot of safety around making journeys at this time. Um, and there is a sense, oh gosh, I mean, this is just so exciting. We've got three very, very auspicious cards in positions related to finance this week. So, you know, a windfall perhaps, some kind of beautiful um, financial gift coming our way, or at least even a, a platform or a way of looking at finances that feels like it's very, very hopeful, even if we have to wait for that. There's a lot of excitement around reciprocity. You know, this is also a time of giving and receiving. You know, we've been traditionally giving and receiving gifts at this time of year. Well, this year I see people actually maybe doing something a little more profound, like making joint purchases on larger things, um, actually really helping each other through perhaps little crises or something. So I see a lot of resources getting circulated in very creative ways among friends and family. It's almost like we're, we're having conversations about how we can help each other out as we are navigating the uncertainty of the times and people are, you know, I'm getting that kind of like the loaves and fishes analogy. It's like people are just sort of saying, well, I can help you with this. Um, and a lot of that sort of exchange going on. So this is really, really lovely. Uh, I want to say as well that often at this time of year, we experience, you know, we're talking about the sunlight here in the Northern Hemisphere. It's very dark at this time of year. And traditionally, our ancient ancestors, of course, would have focused on fire and light. So fire ceremonies around the winter solstice are common all over the world. And the things that these fire ceremonies have in common is that there's a lot about clearing the old. You know, we come to the end of the year and we want to say, let's kind of burn up all the things that we wish we'd done better Let's throw our regrets into the fire and start the year, you know, let them sort of dissipate and start the year with a fresh, clean slate. I know my family, this is something we've started practicing in recent years around the winter solstice is to have either a little bonfire or even if it's just lighting a candle and sit around and talk about the things that we would wish that we would have done a little better over the year, maybe some things that we regret, also the things that we're very grateful for. And in doing this, it's like we're cleansing uh, the palate, so to speak, to get ready for this new beautiful gift of the year ahead. So these are just some things to take into this week and perhaps imagine how you can incorporate them into your personal traditions. I will see you on Christmas Day. 
Till then, have a beautiful holiday season. Many blessings to you all.